Hello everybody and welcome back to How to CMake Good, part 0E. In this part we're going to be talking about using CMake within Visual Studio Code, my personal favorite code editor. I'm doing this on Linux, but it will work very much the same on Windows and Mac OS as well. I'll hop right into it and launch Visual Studio Code. I won't be creating a new CMake project, but I'll just open up an existing one. Now, the best way to use CMake in Visual Studio Code is to use extensions, because Visual Studio Code does not natively understand out of the box how to work with CMake. The two you'll want to get are CMake and CMake Tools. CMake is by TWXS and supplies language support, including syntax highlighting and IntelliSense. The next one is CMake Tools. This one's actually by me. It provides extra features and tweaks to help support CMake-based projects in the editor. I'll go to the file explorer and we can see a regular CMake-based project here. To configure, I'll open the command palette and run CMake configure command supplied by the CMake tools extension. Before it can configure, it'll ask me for a kit to use. I'll select the compiler I want to use, in this case GCC 730. It will then run the CMake configure using the GCC 7 that I requested. It also chose to use the Ninja CMake generator because it can detect Ninja on my path. You can see down below that there was an error. It says the Doxygen was not found. If we go to the Problems panel, we can see CMake Tools has found a problem and highlighted it in our CMake list's text. This is deep within the Doxygen CMake module, so I'll go to where I'm using it in the CMakeLists.txt. Find the Doxygen page, and I'll just comment it out. I'll rerun the configure without Doxygen present. If you have Microsoft C and C++ extension installed, you'll also see this pop-up saying that CMake Tools would like to provide IntelliSense for this folder. This lets CMake Tools provide the C++ extension the information required to compile and parse all of the C and C++ files you have in your project. I'll say allow for now. Next we can go to the CMake tab in the Explorer, also provided by CMake Tools. There's a list of targets as well as some directories based on the file system structure of your project. The targets are listed within each directory as they appear in their cmakelists.txt. I can right click on a target and request it to build. CMake Tools ran CMake to build the target I requested. I could right click and build another target as well. CMake Tools also features this build button in the toolbar. It will build the target to the right, in this case all. I'll hit it and it will build all targets. I have a compile error, but I won't worry about that for now. We can change the default build target by clicking the name of the active build target, and it will show a drop-down of the list of targets we can select to be the default. I'll set the simple target as the default target. You can also press F7 to build the default target. From this little triple dot, I can say clean the project, and it'll clean out all the built files. The small hammer icon next to a target name indicates that it is the default build target. I can also right click on any executable target and run it in the terminal. This will also cause CMake Tools to build it before it runs. You can see this was a test and it had a test failure. We can open up the file that it was named, unicode.cbp, go to line 82, set a breakpoint, right click on the executable and run the target with a debugger. It hit my breakpoint. I didn't need to configure the launch.json or any other debugging options in Visual Studio Code to get the debugger to work. This is the very basics of how to use CMake in Visual Studio Code. Check online for more documentation about using Visual Studio Code and how to use CMake tools and all its features. This was a shorter episode, but in the future I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code to control CMake and not run CMake from the command line as often. Check the video description for any errata, links, addenda, or other important information. In the next few episodes, we'll start focusing more on using CMake directly. Until next time, keep CMake in good.